So I know I haven't done a video on the long range drone in a while, but um, I guess today I'm going to be doing the update. Well, the last one, it was really a long time ago, and uh, I didn't have that much done, and then I really just had the camera working the gimbal. But uh, I really liked how the, the old one worked, but I guess this one, it seems to work a lot better. It looks a lot better too. But uh, with that being said, let's uh, let's get into it. So this is it. Uh, the fuselage you guys are looking at right now is a Sky Hunter uh, fuselage. I'll have that linked in the description if you guys want to do the same thing as I that I did. Um, what you guys are seeing on the top is the uh, Rush FPV Solo Tank uh, GPS for. So I have a the autopilot. Essentially, the flight controller setup. It's a uh, F765 wing. It's one of the old boards. It's the older ones that uh, that was still being manufactured before they uh, discontinued it. Um, I don't even think you can find any more of these online anymore. They're really hard to come by since they're not being made anymore. Um, stuff that's inside of here. So I have um, there's the ESC. Uh, I have my own GPS for the FR Sky. That's the, uh, I believe it's the uh, voltage sensor for the FR Sky, and then some other stuff under the the piece of wood, a piece of uh, plywood. Uh, but basically, it's uh, so I have uh, the updated. So I have the information that I can get from my radio. It's from the uh, the telemetry from the radio and the telemetry inside the uh from uh the computer so i can uh, see it on the computer i'll get it from here from these so if one degrades i'll still have the other one it's like a it's sort of like a backup system um everything on the inside right now it's uh it's pretty sparse you can't see much on the outer so i can't really show you guys sorry about that but that's kind of what it looks like on the inside it's really light you can put the battery on the inside and it gets, it gets a little bit, it gets heavy, but right now it's pretty light. Um, in case you're wondering, the let me actually put this on here for you guys. And you'll be able to see that the gimbal works and everything. Works perfectly. So. I'm using the potentiometers on the uh, X9D, the, the top two potentiometers, and I set it so that the detent in the middle, it centers it. So yeah, it's like that. So. And the same thing, this one goes left and right, so I can actually do this. So. It's not a lot of travel, but it's just enough to like kind of get a feel for everything. Uh, going down a little, this you basically just see you can basically just see this the plywood. I do want to set that up to where uh, I'll be able to the maximum down position is about this right here. But you also got to remember when I go over this way, I can still kind of see down that way. I do. I wish I would have moved it up a little bit further before I actually glued it in place, but I also like how that it's uh, it's positioned right now, just in case of like uh, debris or something crazy. But uh, yeah, the drone itself, I have it all set up using iNav. Um, all of my modes are set up. Really, I just gotta, I'm doing final like tweaking and other things but like uh yeah like it's so far it's uh it's, it's uh, i'm pretty happy how it's turned out um yeah a lot of the things right now it's uh it's it's still kind of in i do want to switch these around so manual let's actually move the manual to this angle and then save. That's one thing I've been meaning to do. So I've been wanting to have most of my switches pushed forward and not be in use. Like, let's see. So 
we can go to, I believe it's, where is it, receiver, here we go. So, so all of my uh, stuff is set up. So, everything is perfect right now. I just wanna do some final tweaking and stuff. Um, there is some stuff on here that I do want to add. So I want to add the speed sensor on it, or I think it's the uh, the magnetometer. And once that's added, I can I can put the uh, speed on the OSD. So this is what you'll see in the OSD now. Um, but here's the thing: I don't I'm not I don't have a, a speed option for it. And the uh, speed I'll be able to get that when I get the magnetometer. So. Uh, yeah, it'll be, uh, should be able to work really good once I get that, and then I'll be able to put that there. I'll calibrate that. Uh, one thing that you should know when you're doing, when you get the magnetometer, is to install it somewhere where there are, where there is little magnetic interference. So what I'm thinking is I'll probably install it somewhere close to the nose, like to the nose of the aircraft, and uh, do it like that. Because uh, I'll probably want it like that, like somewhere up there, anyways. Because it'll, I want it as far away from. Well, I mean, I'm not sure. So let's see. Let me see if I can. Probably not a good idea, but I can probably remove the magnets from up here and get them away from that. So they're installed on that side and on the underside of it. I can probably uninstall those because they don't really need to be there. Uh, let's see uh, it's really just kind of uh, I might just install it up here or right next to the sensors up here who knows uh, it just really has to deal with magnetic interference or EMI that could throw off the uh, the magnetometer or the compass and yeah but so far everything works really well let me turn on my fat sharks so I'm using a foxier uh, omnidirectional antenna it has like a 9 dBi rating for this one so these two are identical and then I have the uh, patch antenna which you can uh, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this but so here it is so you can see the actual let me see if I can get that get a good shot of it in there there we go you know it's hard to focus on it, but like, uh, let me see if I can get it moving around so you can kind of see it. And then I know it's not much. You can't see much. Is you can't really see much out of these goggles, anyways. I should have probably had them hooked up to like a antenna or not an antenna, a uh, an extra screen, so you guys can see better. But uh, it's kind of short notice. But uh, yeah, that is what they look like. Uh, the signal for these, these using this antenna, uh, the both identical antennas, and this uh, this patch antenna uh, is just works wonders. It's uh, I got it off of Amazon. I've been meaning to look at uh, antennas like this that are similar to this. Uh, I've been seeing people, a lot of people in like the RC community, the use of these patch antennas, and they they get magnificent range out of it. I have one antenna that's like a 12 dBi rating, but this one is like, I'm not exactly sure what the rating is for this one. I do have to look it up, but um, it's pretty high. But the one that I have that's a 12 dBi, it's really, uh, it doesn't have a, uh, what is it, the polarization. It's, it doesn't say LH or RHCP. It's just kind of, uh, doesn't really tell you, so. But uh, yeah, with that being said, uh, that's the end of the video. If you guys like the video, uh, like. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. If you didn't like the video, dislike, tell me where I can improve. Uh, that being said, uh, love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.